The Annotations Editor within YouTube is an easy way to quickly add notes, links, or hotspots within your videos. It can be a lifesaver when you just need to quickly add in a little bit more information that you forgot to include when you recorded a video, and you can use it to really increase interactivity within your videos. Right now I'm at my Video Manager page, and I'm going to select an older video that I'd like to add a few notes to to let users know that some of the content has changed, but I don't have time right now to go back and redo the entire video. I'm also going to add some interactive components to this video. When I'm on the video view page and logged into my account, I see one of the tabs across the top says annotations. Choose that tab. This is the annotations editor. You have a preview box across the top where you can scrub through your video to locate just where you want your annotations to occur. So I simply go to where I want my first note or annotation to appear and then use the add annotation button. I have various options for items I can add in. I'll choose speech bubble for this first one. By default, the speech bubble will come in where I have the video paused in the preview box. So this speech bubble will start at 8 seconds and YouTube will display this annotation for 5 seconds. If I'm not happy with that default setting, I can lengthen it or decrease the time. Simply type in the text you want to appear in the speech bubble. In the preview box, you can see a layer has been added to your video with the speech bubble in it. You can resize the speech bubble and you do have some very limited options for size of your font. You can decide if your text should be white or black and you can adjust the fill color of the speech balloon. At the bottom, you see an option to link and you can link any of the annotations to another YouTube video, which I will demonstrate with the next example. So right now I'm going to save this annotation. I'm happy with it. I want to scrub further in the video to where I start to talk about Blogger. Here it is. In this section of the video, I just briefly mention Blogger and talk about what it can do. I would like to link to a full Blogger tutorial here. So I'm going to add in another annotation. This time I'll use a note and type in the relevant text. And now I'll use the link option. I'd like to link this video to another tutorial I have online. If I try to paste in, say, the link to blogger.com or another web page, I'm prompted to please paste in a link to a video. So this link tool will only link your video to another video on YouTube. It doesn't have to be a video you've created. It could be someone else's video that you would like to link to. So I'm going to switch over to my blogger tutorial, copy its address, go back into the annotations editor, and paste it in. I do have an option to adjust the start time, so if I wanted to start this tutorial maybe 30 seconds in, I can adjust that right here. And I can decide if I'd like to open this link in a new window, which I think I will. Along the bottom of my annotations editor, I can see what type of annotations that I've added and where they are approximately in my video. I'm going to save the changes. Now I'm going to add in an interactive component. At this point in the video, I'd like the video to pause and I want my viewers to select an option. So I'm going to add in a new annotation. I'm going to add in a pause. The pause will start right where I'm at in the video and I'd like the pause to last about 10 seconds. Actually, let's make that 15. Now I'm going to add in another annotation right here, which is a speech bubble. And I'm going to tell my viewers to hover over the correct tool option. I'll increase the time on this as well and position the speech bubble where I think it'll be most obvious for my viewers. And I'll save that note. And now I want to add in an area of the screen for users to hover over so that when they've selected the correct tool option, they get a message that says correct. So I'm going to add in another annotation. And in this case, spotlight or label would be the right choice. Both are fairly similar. The only difference is where the text appears when a user hovers over it. So when a user hovers over a spotlighted area, text kind of appears typically uh, well below it, towards the bottom of the screen. And when you use the label option, the text box is kind of tagged right along the bottom of the label. I think I'll go with that option. If I don't like it, I can always switch to spotlight later. I get a little label box here, and I need to resize this to be as small as I can. That's about as small as I can make it. I can see I think the white bar is where my text will appear. So I'm going to align it right there and type a message that says correct YouTube. That's about as well aligned as I can get it. Let's save it and see how it looks. I'm going to publish my annotations and view them on the video's watch page. So now I'll go up to view on watch page and we'll see how everything turned out. There's the first annotation. 
indicating the aviary is no longer available. It's kind of a lighter color till I hover over it, then it turns its true color. Let's skip ahead to see how the link to Blogger turned out. There is the message for the full Blogger tutorial. Again, if I hover over it, it turns its darker color. And if I click here, it does open the tutorial in a new window. Let's skip ahead to our interactivity and see how that turned out. Now the video paused all by itself at 2.49, just as I indicated. And if I hover over this balloon, I see I'm supposed to pick the correct tool option. And when I hover over YouTube, I get a correct, it's YouTube. So that's what the label tool looks like in action. If I were using the spotlight tool, this your correct would appear further at the bottom. You can see it is kind of hard to tag specific areas of the video, but it does add some really neat interactive components to your videos. If you need to adjust any of your annotations, simply go back to the annotations editor. Use the edit existing annotations box. For example, this year correct does need to appear just a little bit earlier to match with the pause. So I'm going to select this option and I'll adjust the time to be consistent with the other two. Save my changes and of course, make sure you publish them. The annotations tool is a great way to easily and quickly communicate with your students. You can have speech bubbles pop up to remind them to take out notes or materials. You can add in interactive elements. You can post quick little changes that you may have forgotten to mention, and you can link your videos to other resources on YouTube.